Hi everyone, I'm Zach Reinhardt, here to review the new Hikashu album, Anguri. Hikashu is a kind of legendary and extremely long-standing avant-garde experimental rock and pop band that uh, was formed in 1978 and really started to blow up with the new wave craze in the 80s. Their sound back then consisted mostly of synthesizers, and um, a kind of shell of a rock band and any sort of other strange instrumentation that might be thrown on top like saxophones or trumpets. And the kind of strange cherry on top is Makigami Koichi's vocals, which are kind of operatic, have a wavering uh, vibrato to them, and are very reminiscent of uh, kabuki theater. And Hikashu has been putting out music pretty consistently um, ever since their inception. And uh, they've really evolved over time. And I will admit I am somewhat not as familiar as I should be with their discography to really discuss the uh, kind of plethora of changes that they've gone through over time. Nowadays, however, their sound is much changed from their uh, inception. They've pretty much ditched synthesizers altogether in favor of more organic instrumentation. And uh, they've really embraced jazz, especially free improvisation, alongside their more poppy and easy to digest songs. Their last album, Ikitekoi Chinmoku, uh, was a really great album. It had a lot of <laughs> Hikashu like strangeness to it. Um, but was still grounded in more typical songwriting techniques, and that's something Hikashu always leans on to make their songs still extremely strange and uh, avant-garde, but also somewhat easy to digest and uh, not so out there that it's just completely alien to the ear. And on this new album, Anguri, uh, Hikashu continue down this same kind of jazzy uh, avant-garde path, but this time with even more of an emphasis on kind of free improvisation and uh, dense, kind of noisy uh, songs. The opener, Anguri, is probably the clearest mix of these two kind of halves of Hikashu with uh, kind of free, jazzy, uh, improvised noodling from the guitar and piano over top of a rhythm section that is playing a rather subdued groove and uh, Makigami Koichi doing his uh, typical kind of operatic vocals over top of it. The song does have a discernible structure and uh, chorus and repeated melodies that show up, but the instrumentation is really just kind of floating in orbit around these ideas rather than really being a part of them, which um, is not necessarily a bad thing. I do find it to be kind of an interesting way to uh, write a song. There's an extremely noisy and distorted guitar solo on here, which is uh, something that pops up throughout the album. The guitar solos on this album are very noisy and uh, fuzzy and distorted, which is an interesting choice considering how clean most of the rest of the instrumentation is with the drums and the bass and the very pretty piano and occasional like saxophone and other like woodwind instruments that you hear on here. The guitar really stands out in its distorted abrasiveness, and I think it works well, actually. And the band goes full free jazz on the second track, Doremo ga Seikai, which is honestly one of the more underwhelming free jazz tracks, and as a result is not a great intro to this kind of half of the album, and it is about half of the album. This song features some kind of interesting, uh, like, wailing from uh, Makigami's cornet that he's playing, but uh, the rest of the instrumentation I don't find to be particularly evocative and uh, doesn't really grab me in any way. On the next track, though, Shiko no Moso, Hikashu really turns it the other direction and really shows off their knack for writing just really great grooves and riffs. This song features a kind of noisy guitar that's really just going crazy uh, in the background during pretty much the whole song. But at the core of this song is just a really solid, catchy riff between the bass and the piano and a great groove from the drums.
They also toy with the time signature a little bit when switching between parts to where uh, things don't start quite where you expect them to, and it just kind of messes with you in that way, and I find that really entertaining. And this is a really solid track from Hikashu. Skipping ahead a bit, however, to track 5, Tsubayaku Kai, or by its better English title, Selfish Shellfish, um, we get finally a Hikashu free jazz track that I find really compelling. The song starts off with uh, Makigami playing a, a jaw harp or a jews harp or uh, a kokin as it's credited in the uh, album credits there. And the band builds into this kind of uh, disjointed, chaotic backdrop um, that Koichi just really goes nuts on with his voice. Um, he gets these low growls and these kind of operatic high notes and this kind of wavering uh, vibrato that he brings into his voice all the time and um, just some really strange noises that he can make with his mouth. Whatever he can do, he kind of brings forth on this track. And uh, the track is actually, I find, really pretty intense as a result. I think the really wild and kind of crazy vocals uh, really add something to this track that make it really unique and interesting in the track listing. The next three tracks, Ine, Tome Sugiruyo, and Yokai Des, are all really compelling and uh, interesting tracks, and I highly recommend you check them out. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to talk about my favorite, Tome Sugiruyo. This song really has all the kind of strangeness that I love about Hikashu, uh, all the odd time signatures and uh, weird rhythmic stuff and great grooves and catchy melodies um, combined with like avant-garde weirdness uh, wrapped up into a really nice package and I think this song is really kind of emblematic of modern Hikishu. This song features heavily this refrain that I think is arguably in 512 time. It's a very strange time signature, and um, but it actually works really well when combined with the uh, triplet rhythm that is the main groove of this song. The song is a little bit prog rocky, especially as it reaches the top of the chorus, and it feels like the song really kind of expands. It has a kind of dramatic, but still very catchy chorus, and uh, there's a really great piano solo on this song as well that is very jazzy and uh, just really well performed. And did I mention the groove? Because it's damn good. The drums sound really great on this track, especially. The drums sound great all over this thing. The production is really on point on this record. But this is one of the tracks where the drums really get their chance to shine. And uh, it is a really tight groove that pulls this song together. Then on track 9, Zenhoi Ayashige, we get another really compelling free improv track from Hikashu here. Uh, this song apparently features um, the girls from Afri Rampo. On vocals, though, listening to the track, I wasn't able to really hear them, but they're credited on the album credits as being on this song, so what do I know? This song is another one of the more intense free jazz tracks on here, free improv tracks. Um, it starts off just immediately with a lot of kind of dense sound going on. Uh, we get more of Makigami's crazy vocals kind of going wild over this thing. But this time, they eventually take it actually down from there and get a little bit more spacey and a little bit more atmospheric, and this uh, saxophone solo starts up that is really kind of crazy and noisy, and uh, I mean, I love free jazz saxophone, and this is a really well, well done solo here. On the track Aisenayo Sonnanja, uh, Hikashu is doing almost like 80s J-pop with just kind of a weird edge to it. The song is really fast-paced and has uh, pretty catchy, poppy guitars. There's still some weirdness. There's still some dense, kind of noisy weirdness with uh, this kind of wailing organ solo that happens towards the end of the track. 
Um, but overall, it's a really catchy song with a fun chorus that is actually almost just like an 80s J-pop track. I could almost picture like uh, Nakamori Akina on this thing if uh, it were just toned down in the weirdness a little bit. And on the closer, E Shitsumon Desune, we get another really tight, tight groove and a very catchy guitar line. This song is the longest track on the album by far at almost seven minutes long, um, but it's also just one of the most compelling. It has a really great groove, again, that really uh, is the through line for the song, holds it together, and it's kind of post-punky almost in the way that it just rides on the same groove for a large portion of the track. The vocal melody is just really catchy, and uh, Makigami Koichi's vocals are really charismatic as usual on this track. And uh, there's some really great soloing that happens on here as well. The noisy guitar solo, once again, I think fits in really well, despite how juxtaposed it is against the pretty clean instrumentation that uh, the rest of the band is playing. And the piano solo towards the end of this track is another really great, jazzy, well-performed piano solo. And this is a track that just really shows off how great and together of a band Hikishu is. They really can gel well together and they really just know how to make a jam sound interesting for a long time. And uh, this is a really great track. It's possibly my favorite track on the record, though it's hard to choose because there are a lot of great tracks on here. So yeah, um, overall, I'm really liking this album a lot. Hikashu is always a trip to listen to, and um, they're always just doing something interesting. And they're also just a really great, tight, together band that really know what they're doing and have honed their sound over a long time. My only real complaint about this album is that some of the free improv tracks I find a little underwhelming. Um, uh, there are six of them, and about half of them I find to be kind of forgettable. Uh, a few of them are really interesting and really leave an impact, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but there's a few of them that just feel like filler, and I'm just kind of waiting for the next uh, Hikashu catchy melody or groove to begin. But all the non-free improv tracks are really solid and uh, just really well-written songs, a lot of fun. Um, they're simultaneously catchy and accessible and fairly easy to listen to, while also being strange and avant-garde and uh, kind of artsy and weird. The performances on this thing are really great all around. All the band is really great at their instruments, and th they even incorporate some really weird instrumentation on here, like there's some bass clarinet that uh, the keyboardist plays, and um, even that is really to a high level of uh, skill and quality and sounds great. I'm feeling an 8 out of 10 on this record. Um, this is another really solid record from Hikashu. Their whole discography has been solid, and they're just one of those rare bands that can just keep on going and keep trying new things and never really lose their touch. If you're not familiar with Hikashu, this is definitely a solid album to start with and to acquaint yourself with. And um, if you like what you hear on here, um, check out their last album, Ikitakoi Chinmoku, which was also very good. So yeah, if you're looking for some art pop, some uh, art rock, some a little bit of prog rock, maybe some jazz, free jazz, all kind of wrapped up into this kind of strange package, and if any of that sounds appealing to you, uh, definitely check this out. Check out Hikashu. Um, they're kind of a legend. They've just been around for so long, putting out really solid music. And um, as far as I can tell, they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, so yeah, that's me. This is the new Hikashu album. It's called Anguri. And um, I'll see you guys next week for another review. Peace.